All right, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, everyone. This is Dr. Ephraim. Today's date is January 26, 2023. Uh, if you listen to the sound of my voice, I mean, you were blessed to see another day. And all praise, honor, and glory is due to the Most High God of Israel for now and forever. All right, everyone, welcome to all my new subscribers and older alike. If you haven't already, make sure you hit that subscribe button. Uh, hit the notification bell and select all. That way you'll be notified every time I upload a new presentation. We're still fighting uh, algorithms, man. My shorts are doing well, but my, my the main videos, man, but it's just, it's just not, the algorithm is not showing it to people for whatever reason. I mean, it's just, so we have to do better on, you know, liking the videos and commenting and, you know, engaging. I mean, I got over 8,000 new subscribers, man. I mean, I've been busting my behind. You know, getting all these new subscribers, but yet my my views still aren't aren't going anywhere, man. So, and it's like it's only my channel that's like that. Like there are, there are channels with with way less subscribers that are doing way better numbers than me views wise. And I mean, it just it just doesn't make sense. I mean, after all these subscribers I'm getting, and I, and I'm still pretty much stuck where I was when I started back last year. So, anyway. That's that, man. But, um, you know, we're going to keep it moving, keep it pushing. I'm not going to give up. I'm not going to get discouraged. We're going to keep it moving. Um, I'm almost at 30,000 subscribers, man. That's that's crazy. When I came back in the game, I was at like 20,000 or whatever. And so I'm almost at 30 now. So we're going to keep it moving, man. I appreciate you all for, for taking, you know, taking part and doing your part to engage in the videos and, and, and commenting and liking, liking them and, and viewing them, you know. Because the algorithm is it's just it's, it, it hates my channel. I mean, I mean, I, I'm saying it's the algorithm, but I mean, I really think it's something it's something else. I mean, I just I don't know what it is. I mean, I got eight thousand new subscribers. It just it doesn't make sense, man. I mean, I've been I've been really going above and beyond getting numbers up, and it's just, it just doesn't make sense at all. And I keep telling them like, what's wrong with my channel? Is my channel shadow banned? I mean, am I am I being blocked some kind of way? I mean, what's 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 going on with my channel? And I mean, because it just it doesn't make sense. When I first started back, okay, yeah, I know I had to climb back up because I know it's, you know YouTube totally changed with this whole algorithm stuff and all that. So, okay, cool. I mean, I I I, I hustled and I got over eight thousand, almost you know, shit, nine thousand new subscribers, man, new subscribers. So why aren't you showing my, my material to them, the ones who subscribe to the channel? Because if you did, I mean, I know that those 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 subscribers would, would at the very least they'd click on it and view it or whatever. But if it doesn't appear that that's happening, why aren't you showing my 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 videos to to my new subscribers? Let's forget the old ones. What about all my new subscribers? How come you're not showing it to them? I don't I don't understand. So anyway, man, um, yeah, it's it's, it's frustrating, but I'm, I'm I'm gonna keep it pushing. Um, this channel, like I said, we deal with, I deal with a little bit of everything, you know, deal with, um, knowledge, uh, a lot of black history that doesn't, doesn't get talked about, that, um, doesn't get taught in schools. Um, we do, uh, you know, Bible study. Um, you know, I talk about sports, um, entertainment, uh, music, uh, you name it, right? I'm, I'm multifaceted, so I have a, a myriad of things that interest me. And so that's why this channel is kind of, you know, it, it touches on a little bit of everything. You get it a little, you know, get it all here. So that being said, um, that's what this lesson is going to be about. A um, uh, brother by the name of um, George Edwin Taylor. And I know to many of you, you just heard his name right then and there for the first time in your life. Well, and that shouldn't be because why? He was the first uh, black man that ran for president of the United States in the 1900s, man, which is, I mean, that in itself is, is, is fascinating. You know, I mean, because the fact that, I mean, his, you know, there were no, uh, uh, you know, acts of violence against against him, or you know, uh, clearly his life wasn't taken. So I mean, but that, but just just the fact that he ran for president, man, in 1900s, and I mean, he's never talked about. His name is never mentioned anywhere ever, right? While while the governor of Florida is trying to block African American study, you see what I'm saying? So that's why I try to you know I try to touch on and teach teach you all, bring to you all about the the stories that 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 we don't know about and there's plenty of them throughout history you know and i don't want to just use the month of february to do it so you know i, I kind of do it um you know intermittently throughout on this channel you know I, there's a lot of great content here on this channel man it's really it's 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 a shame that i mean it's just it's just it's not really getting shown 
There's just a lot, a lot of knowledge and great content on this channel, man. Go through it when you have some time. And you'll, you'll see what I'm saying, man, really. Um, eight years doing this, man. It's like, come on, man. I mean, you know, I, and there's no reason to, to, to be blocking my channel. I'm not the only one, you know, there's other channels out there like mine that, you know, so why, why do something to mine? I mean, I don't understand. But either way, man, um, we're going to go ahead and that's the discussion for today, man. Uh, just to say that, you know, in itself is fascinating. I mean, a black man ran for president in the 1900s and yet, He's never talked about and, and, you know, we, our people know nothing about him. And I think that needs to stop and it's going to stop today. George Edwin Taylor, say his name. He was the first black man to run for president of the United States. Let's get it. George Edwin Taylor was born on August, August 4th, 1857 and died December 23rd, 1925. He was an American journalist, editor, political activist, and politician. In 1904, he was the candidate of the National Negro Liberty Party for President of the United States of America. He was the first African American to run for president. Taylor was born free in Little Rock, Arkansas, because his mother was free. His father was enslaved. His mother took him to Alton, Illinois, where she died. He reached La Crosse, Wisconsin in 1865, where he lived with the family of a ship cook. After they left the city, he was placed in a foster home at age 10 and lived with that family until he was 20. He attended public school. He had early work experience in La Crosse as a journalist and labor political activist. In 1891, Taylor left Wisconsin and moved to Okaloosa, Iowa, or Oskaloosa, Iowa. He published a weekly newspaper, The Negro Solicitor, in the 1890s. Taylor shifted from being an independent Republican to the Democratic Party. In 1892, he was founder and president of the National Colored Men's Protection League. In 1900, he was president of the National Negro Democratic League the Negro Bureau within the National Democratic Party. In 1904, Taylor joined the National Negro Liberty Party, a third party, and ran as his candidate for president of the United States. After the failure of his 1904 campaign, he returned to the Democratic Party. George Edwin Taylor was born free uh, in Little Rock, Arkansas. August 4th, 1857, because his mother was a free woman of color. His father was Nathan Taylor, an enslaved African-American. The precise statuses of Hines and Taylor are unknown. In 1859, Arkansas enacted a free Negro expulsion bill, which required all free blacks, a black defined as anyone with the equivalent of one black grandparent, to leave the state by January 1st, 1860 or face sale into slavery for a period of one year to cover costs of removal. At the time, about 700 free black people lived in Arkansas, fewer than any other slave state. All but 144 free blacks left the state rather than risk uh, slavery. Despite what you read in uh, many history books, such as the Biographical Dictionary of Congressional Women, Representative Shirley Chisholm, uh, was not in, 19, in, the, in 1972 the first African-American candidate to run for president of the United States. She wasn't. In 1904, it was George Edwin Taylor. And he's often forgotten in the discussion of black American political pioneers. But he ran for, uh, he ran for president as a candidate of the Negro, National Negro Liberty Party sometimes known as the National Liberty Party. In 1904, 36 states sent representatives to the Liberty Party Convention. According to the Times, the party denounced the Democrats' disenfranchisement of black Americans. It questioned Theodore Roosevelt's fidelity to African Americans, and it stood for unqualified enforcement of the Constitution, reparations for ex-slaves, and independence for the Philippines. The candidate Taylor, the paper announced, was one of a dozen children whose father was a slave and his mother was born a free person in the South. 
Quote, when his mother died, the paper notes, young Taylor was left a waif and slept in dry goods boxes. He finally drifted north and attended the Baptist Academy at Beaver Dam in Wisconsin. Feeble, feeble health and um, an exhausted pocketbook caused him to leave school within a year of graduating. To support himself, the Times reported, Taylor took a job as a newspaper reporter in La Crosse. He eventually became the editor of the La Crosse Evening Star. So, um, the library, as from 1910 to 1925, Taylor retreated from the national stage and lived an active life in Jacksonville, Florida. As perhaps the first African-American, there's no perhaps, to run for president of the United States was George Edwin Taylor, the right man at the time, was the question. And it says, given the fact that Taylor received fewer than 2,000 votes when he ran for president, in 1904, it's hard to call him the, quote, right man at the right time. Another way to look at this is to ask why he in particular became the first African-American to run for president. Why did he do what Frederick Douglass, T. Thomas Fortune, Blanche K. Bruce, and other leading black politicians before him could or would not do? Hmm. Part of the irony of the situation is that Taylor's marginal status may have made him more likely to be first. Right before the Civil War, African-American men could only vote in New York and five New England states, and their percentage of the population in those states was far too small for any party to consider nominating them. In 1870, the 15th Amendment gave black men around the country the right to vote. Black women did not gain this right nationally until the 19th Amendment was ratified in 1920. And so black politicians in southern states or in northern cities with rapidly growing black populations, might have considered a run for the White House. Neither the Republicans nor Democrats, though, would have seriously considered nominating an African American for president. The Republicans would not have risked alienating, alienating white voters for the sake of gaining black votes that they fell short to get anyway, and the Democrats had a well-earned reputation for racial hostility. Uh, the fact that Taylor became the first African-American to run for president in 1904, decades after nearly all African-Americans had gained the right to vote, also shows that understanding black fist is not just a matter of when white Americans became liberal enough to support such a thing, or when African-Americans were finally able to win their fight for the right to do a thing, but instead depends on many different factors. Finally, George Taylor shows us the great diversity of political thought and the robust political debate that takes place within the African-American community. The media tends to depict African-Americans as monolithic and simple-mindedly loyal to the Democratic Party, just as it once depicted us as a monolithic and simple-mindedly loyal to the Republican Party. The story of Taylor shows that this simply is not true and never has been. Even the decisions to support a major party over an independent party with more racially progressive views, which happened in 1904 and has happened many more times since then, is part of this discussion and is a matter of pragmatism, not blind allegiance. There we go. And my thing is this, my position is this, man, how fascinating is it for, you know, a black man back in the 1900s to, to literally run for president? Of the United States. I mean, that is in itself is is just fascinating on so many levels, and I think deserves a definitely more recognition and 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 uh, you know and respect than obviously he he gets. I mean, uh, this man is a virtual unknown, and that's just it. There's so many of our stories throughout history that has not been told that we don't know um, that we should, and I'm going to continue to concentrate on that, man. You know, um, but anyway. Uh, May may God have mercy on 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 his soul, on his eternal soul, and uh, and 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 hopefully his his descendants are are, are blessed uh, and doing well. All right, so that's 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 you know my part that I, that I want to play in you know getting his name out there. You know um, George Edwin Taylor. You know say his name. He's the first African American to run for president of the United States of America. All right. So on that note, uh, like I said, you guys continue to like the videos, um, share them, um, comment, you know, engage, and I'll, I'll do the same as much as I can. And I appreciate you all. All right. So until next time, uh, next lesson, this is Dr. Ephraim signing off saying Shalom Elect.